When is it? When's the proposed publication? Yes. Oh, that's soon. Yeah, they're My name is Sarah Sherman Stokes. I went to Bates College in Lewiston, Maine, and I graduated from Boston College Law School in 2011. I'm an Equal Justice Works Fellow and Detention Attorney at the PEAR Project. The PEAR Project is the Political Asylum and Immigration Representation Project. We are the only organization that represents detained non-citizens in the state of Massachusetts. Most of my clients came to the United States as children, fleeing their home countries, fleeing civil war and other atrocities, came to the United States and have suffered from untreated mental illness and substance dependence that has landed them in the criminal justice system and then in deportation proceedings, which is where I find them and represent them. One of the great pleasures of teaching is the ability to work with students like Sarah. The thing I'll say about Sarah that's most notable is that I don't think she yet understands how special and talented she is. Light due process, yeah. um, which is really My name is Daniel Canstrom. I'm a professor of law and director of the International Human Rights Program. I teach immigration law, human rights law, and administrative law, and have been at Boston College for more than 20 years. I see the job of the law school and of the human rights program more specifically as taking students who have a pretty well-developed sense of wanting to do some good in the world, then just helping them find their voice, find their way to channel those energies and that enthusiasm, and then give them the tools so that they can become excellent lawyers. I was working as a paralegal at the CARE Coalition, a nonprofit organization in Washington, D.C. And while I was working there doing immigration work and deportation defense, um, I felt really good about the work I was doing, but it was incomplete. And I was surrounded by lawyers, and I, they had this really powerful thing. They could get someone out of jail and prevent someone from being deported to a place where they might face certain harm or torture or even death. I wanted a more tools in my toolbox in order to help the people that I felt like weren't getting a fair shake, and the law seemed like the answer to that. I distinctly remember the first time that I met Sarah. I walked into our uh, office of the Boston College Immigration and Asylum program, which we called it at the time, which was our immigration clinic, um, and she was there as a very young uh, volunteer. I remember speaking with her at the time about why she wanted to do this work, and I was immediately impressed by her modesty, but also her sophistication and her willingness to pitch in. She had a real sense of why she wanted to do this work and how important it would be for her. I just said, welcome aboard, because I feel exactly the same way. I think Boston College Law School um, definitely fosters a community that uh, values social justice, recognizes social inequality, and, and strives to, to play a role in rectifying that particularly through the clinical programs, which um, are just tremendous. And participating in the clinical program was far and away the best thing I did at Boston College. I was able to interact directly with clients, um, to get to know them as people and not just as legal facts or legal theories or legal strategies. Well, I think there's a number of reasons why I recommend human rights to, and immigration law more specifically to law students. One is uh, the basic idea that you're given a great gift when you have an education, but particularly when you have the kind of education that our students have. The grounding in the particular tradition, the particular Jesuit heritage of this institution, a deep sense of giving something back while also pursuing academic excellence, a belief of the importance of service to others, uh, of doing some good in the world. What I do is so fun. It's, uh, it's so incredibly rewarding. My clients on paper don't look like nice guys. They have criminal histories, mental illness, substance dependence. Uh, they're a mess. But I get to know them as real people and not just the sum of their criminal history. Um, I get to find out who's good at chess, who loves country music. I hear about their families and their childhoods. And that, for me, is really, really meaningful. I have an enormous amount of power. and. I feel a responsibility, and I, I don't say that to be cute or to be uh, contrived. I really do feel an obligation to do something about this. These people are human beings. They have families. They have lives. They have communities where they come from. If I can change a little something for a few of them and a few of their families, uh, why shouldn't I? I could see her becoming one of the top immigration lawyers in the country. I could see her arguing cases before circuit courts and before the Supreme Court. I could see her representing clients in a day-to-day -day basis uh, in detention centers and saving lives over the course of her career. I could see her 
entering the academic field and maybe, maybe becoming a clinical teacher. I think that's a very possible path for her. I really hope to make this my life's work, the representation of detained non-citizens, I think will be my bread and butter for the foreseeable future. Ultimately, I think I would love to teach, preferably in a clinical setting. I feel so, so lucky to have had the mentors and professors that I have at BC. They really made me who I am as an attorney and gave me the tools to be successful in this work. And I would really like to think that one day I could do that for other students. I think that's ambitious and I have a long way to go before I can do that. But I would like to try.